Hello Space Cat and welcome back to my channel. Recently, there's been huge hype all over Twitter with rumors that Beetlejuice is about to explode. And no, I do not mean the 80s Tim Burton horror. Could this really be true and what would happen to us if it really did go supernova? Find out in this week's video. On the shoulders of Orion, top left of his belt, you'll find the bright star Betelgeuse. It's the ninth brightest star in the night sky. And not only is Betelgeuse very bright, but it's also huge. It's a red supergiant star. And as its name suggests, it spans about 1.2 billion kilometers across. If you were to place Betelgeuse at the center of our solar system, it would be so big that it would stretch out to about the orbit of Jupiter. Betelgeuse is also kind of strange. It's spinning at 33,500 miles per hour, 150 times faster than it should be given its size. And this has led astronomers to believe that it has swallowed a companion star or object. Despite their size and luminosity, however, red supergiants are the coldest of supergiant stars, and Betelgeuse is no different. It's just two thirds the temperature of our sun. It's run out of hydrogen and helium to burn, and now it's swelling up as a red supergiant and coming to the end of its life. After burning through all of the hydrogen and the helium, a massive star like Betelgeuse will then go on to burn heavier and heavier elements like carbon and like oxygen. Eventually, we'll hit one of the heavier elements, iron, and that's where fusion stops and the star's inward pressure from its gravity will overcome the outward pressure from fusion. This will cause the core of the star to collapse. The star will eject its outer layers at very high energies and a bright flash will be visible from very, very far away. And this is the supernova. It will leave either a neutron star or a black hole depending on the mass of the star. So it's pretty much inevitable that Betelgeuse will eventually go supernova. And astronomers have used evolutionary models and the characteristics of Betelgeuse, such as its temperature, its mass, and its composition, to try to predict exactly when it will happen. They think it will be about 100,000 years time or so. However, predicting when exactly Betelgeuse will go supernova is actually pretty difficult to do since it relies very heavily on these evolutionary models being correct, a very accurate measurement of the mass, and a good understanding of what's happening inside of the star. Betelgeuse could go supernova anytime now, and then again, it might not happen for another million years or so. Betelgeuse is 640 light years away from us. From the same evolutionary models that predicted Betelgeuse's death, it's believed that when Betelgeuse goes supernova, that it will reach a apparent magnitude of minus 12.4 mag. That's brighter than the moon and visible during the day for several months. Despite its close proximity to us, Betelgeuse does not really pose any harm to us on Earth. When Betelgeuse goes supernova, it's unlikely that any gamma rays will be produced. And it's too far away for any ejected material or even x-rays and UV radiation to do us any harm. There's also not any fear of it turning into a black hole either and swallowing us up because Betelgeuse does not have a core that is massive enough to turn it into a black hole. It's most likely going to end up as a neutron star with about one and a half times the mass of our sun. Recently, astronomers have noticed that Betelgeuse is behaving extremely strangely. It's much dimmer than it has ever been before, and even dimmer than the star Regal in the bottom right of the Orion constellation. But does that mean that Betelgeuse is about to blow? The answer is no. You see, Betelgeuse is known to be notoriously variable. 
Its apparent magnitude can be anywhere between 0.2 and 1.2 magnitudes over a period of about 400 days. And not only is its brightness varying, but its diameter is varying too. The diameter of Betelgeuse can be anywhere between 550 and 920 times the sun's diameter. The reason behind this, astronomers think that Betelgeuse is pulsating is because it has an unstable atmosphere. When it contracts, it absorbs more of the energy that passes through it. And as a result, the atmosphere heats up and expands. And when the star expands, the atmosphere becomes less dense and cools down, which leads to another period of this kind of contraction. So what's happening here with Betelgeuse is actually perfectly common and in fact has happened several times in the last 50 years at least. But even if it was about to go supernova, since Betelgeuse is 640 light years away, it would take 640 years for that light to reach us. So maybe Betelgeuse has already gone supernova and we might not know it at all because the light hasn't traveled to us yet. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's video. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like to see Betelgeuse go supernova. I'll put extra reading material down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.